you're here for another fantastic recipe. Now, I am a guy that loves big, big sandwiches. I love pastrami, I love roast beef, I love burgers, I love, but my little sister Morgan, who I love so much, taught me to appreciate the vegetarian side of things, to understand that, well, there's a lot of big flavor and there's some delicious sandwiches and they don't have to have meat, and that's what we're making today. We're making a fried oyster mushroom burger. You're gonna love it. I know you're shaking your head right now saying, come on, guy, I want some tacos, I want some pizza, I want a big pastrami sandwich, I want that burger that you always do at Guy's Burger Joint. Trust me, once you try this, once you get a bite of this, it's gonna change your game. Let's start things off. I'll grab this, I always, I always wreck the cookie uh, drying racks. I'm gonna take these scallions and I'm gonna make this charred scallion mayo. Now, I had a version of this fried mushroom sandwich on a triple D joint down in San Diego, and I'm gonna tell you what, I don't think I'll ever be able to do as good as they did. You got my favorite things going on here. You got the acid, you got the salt, and you got the heat. I would eat one of those every day. This is kind of my interpretation, okay? So we'll throw this down, char up these scallions. While that's working, we have a little donkey sauce. Of course, in the Fieti house, we always have donkey sauce. And this is simply just some mayonnaise, some garlic, some Worcestershire, uh, black pepper, um, and a little bit of mustard. You can't beat it. So we'll try these real quick. There we go, that's hot. While that's working, I've got oil coming up. My oil is screaming hot right now. It's at 400 plus, and I'm gonna be frying, so I want that at what temperature at home? Exactly, 350 degrees. I'm gonna take this a little bit higher because I'm, these mushrooms are gonna be kind of thin and they're gonna go off really fast. I wanna put a really nice hard crunch on them, but typically 350 would be where we'd wanna be. Scallions, nice and hot, great flavor. Into the donkey sauce, give it a little stir. That's the beginning. Okay, Fresno chili, nice and thin. If you can't get them thin enough like this, go ahead and get the mandolin out. Nice thin Fresno chili. We'll get a little cabbage. Again, another great time to have the mandolin. This is gonna be a nice, light, crunchy slaw that's gonna go right on top of this. Okay, a little purple cabbage. If you're not gonna use all the cabbage, don't cut it all up. Just gonna sit there and dry out in your fridge. Okay. All that's done. Into a bowl, we'll get a little rice vinegar. Seasoned rice vinegar. A little mustard. You got all these ingredients, right? This is simple. I mean, this is about, and if you don't have the seasoned rice vinegar, use apple cider vinegar. Touch of some salt, a little cracked black pepper, a little olive oil. You know what I'm gonna do? A little garlic. See how I'm improvising? That's the beauty about this dish. You can make this your flavor, your style. I'm taking it a little bit into the Asian element right now. But if you want to throw barbecue sauce on this, you could. Drop in the cabbages, the Fresno chili, great color in that. Throw a little bit of the scallion. Boom. Give this a mix, okay? Now the mushrooms, if I have my choice, it's gonna be what's the freshest mushroom and what looks the best. We have these beautiful oyster mushrooms. Now you can see how they've grown, okay? We're gonna take this bottom off here and they're probably gonna start to come apart on us a little bit. That's fine. We're gonna take them and pull them apart a bit and dredge them in some flour. Come on over. You with me? I take the bling off. I'll be washing this for a week. AP flour, rice flour. Very simple, just gonna take the mushrooms, break them into a couple pieces, give them a little dredge just so some flour will stick to their natural moisture that they have. A little bit more. Now, I gotta grab a couple eggs. We're gonna make a tempura flour, real quick and easy tempura flour right here. So the shell is not supposed to go in there. There's two, but this is where we're really gonna change everything, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna take this ice and this seltzer, and this is what's gonna create the nice light airiness. One, the cold, and two, the carbonation, okay? 
So these are cold, but I'm also gonna add them to the ice. So first we'll mix up the eggs into the flour. Now we'll come over here with just a little bit of the seltzer water. Start to see that batter forming up. I'm using this baking dish because it'll keep the temperature without letting this get too hot. Matter of fact, if you can start off with it cold, the whole key to this is to making this tempura is to really make sure that this batter stays cold. If you don't want to use the egg, you don't have to. The main principle of the egg is for some really nice color. And I just keep adding it as I need it. I didn't do real set measurements. A Little bit lumpy like pancake batter. And like I said, super, super cold. And if you keep this cold, like if you want to do multiple batches of this, you throw it back in the freezer, you're gonna be real happy. It's that reaction that happens from going to super, super cold, bound to the mushrooms, to going into the hot oil that's gonna create that expansion. See how excited I got about that? Looking forward to be just about like pancake butter. Okay? Fantastic. Let's come over here, get all this frying going at one time. I'm making such a mess. All right, over we go. Drop the mushrooms in. We're at, we're still screaming too hot. Hang on a second. This is where we'll make the big mistake. If we don't get this temperature correct, we're just gonna send ourselves into frying the outside of it and being raw in the center. So the best way to do this is to add a little more oil. There we go. You see it start to drop right there? Awesome. We're right about 375. Bring them right over. Give them a little shake, making sure we don't put too much batter in. And we drop them right in. Now, my Taki mushrooms are awesome for this. Whatever your favorite mushroom is. Oh, this is gonna be dynamite. And this with the cold, crunchy slaw and a little bit of that roasted scallion donkey sauce. Make sure I didn't leave anybody behind. Okay. This is super critical, nice spider. Oh, look at this, nice, big, crunchy puff. You see the puff going on with that? That's because of the cold, that's because of the carbonation. While that goes, Get a little garlic butter. I believe that whenever we're using bread, and again, we don't get to eat it as often as we love to, make sure you're using something really good and also treat it. I think that just giving it a little bit of, you know, giving it a little appreciation of putting a little garlic butter on this, giving it a little toast, building some of that flavor, Building some of that texture. Okay. Go down with those two. Mushrooms are almost done, and you can already see how it's puffing up so nice. And if you don't want the bun, just this with some slaw on it's gonna be done. A nice meaty mushroom. Going on a little bit of tang of the acid that we have in there from that seasoned vinegar from the slaw. Shibata has toasted off nicely. I like to get both sides of it. You know, one of the things about when we're cooking is having the setup, being ready ahead of time for what you need, when you're gonna need it, keeps you from running around trying to find something and coming back and it's burnt. Look at these beautiful mushrooms. Nice, light, crispy. Let these cool down just a touch. Excellent, okay? Get in a little bit of that scallion donkey sauce or the scallion mayo. Touch on top. And again, you don't want to do this. You don't want to get into the uh, the mayo. You can make a vegan mayo. I've had some fantastic vegan mayos. We're out there, Triple D. I'm finding all these great vegan restaurants that are coming up. Give that a shot. I mean, if you really want to take it hardcore like that, you totally can. Then we'll grab some of the slaw. Wrong side. There we go. Gonna give that fry just a little touch of some salt. Fried food loves its salt. Little lemon juice, just a little kiss, little acid to that fry. Oh yeah, I've been dying to make this for you. You wanna make this, you know you do. So simple, so easy, so straightforward. Besides the frying part of I me, mean, I guess you could roast the mushrooms, but come on, once in a while we can indulge. Your favorite mushroom Tempura battered, Asian slaw, a garlic butter ciabatta, all put together with a little roasted scallion aioli. Come on.
It's crunchy. It's salty. It's got great acidity. It's rich with the scallion mayo. It's meaty. It's definitely meaty. You and you try this at home, don't tell your friends that it's mushroom. Don't make a big deal about it. Just say, hey, made this sandwich. What is it? Is it chicken? Uh-huh, as far as you know. Let them get into it. I promise you, they take a bite of that, they're never going to know that it's mushroom. You're going to love this recipe. Download it now. See you guys next week. Adios.